right, everybody, welcome back to what will be, to me at the very least, the most special episode of this show to date. <laughs> Alex, <laughs> what's going on? Man? How you doing? As always, couldn't do it without you. So glad you're here for this one because this movie Absolutely. is special to both of us for different reasons. Right. And we can't, we, you, look, for anybody watching, y'all just don't know how the preparation had to go into this because we didn't want to do an injustice to this film. Right. It's it's really special. It's really special to, honestly, to like the black community, it's a special movie. So we just want to make sure that we're doing a little justice to it and showing our love for it. And hopefully y'all enjoy this conversation. Yes. Yeah. But today we are talking about the 1985 classic Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon. The Last Dragon. This movie happens to be my personal favorite film of all time. I've seen this movie more times than I can count. To start with, when this movie came out back in 85, I was seven years old. I was all into, you know, dinosaurs and stuff like that. And of course, you know, action movies and kung fu and stuff. But my mother and my sister wanted to see this movie. At seven, I did not want to see this movie. Because another movie came out the same weekend called Baby, Secret of the Lost Legend, about a dinosaur in the Congo or whatever. And that was the movie I wanted to see. And we, we were only going to see one movie. So I was overruled. I remember being in the car crying, like literally bawling out crying on the way to the theater. And can I tell you, that was the worst mistake. I, not wanting to see that movie would have been the worst mistake of my life, I think. When we get there, first of all, this happens to be the same weekend that Friday the 13th Part 5 was coming out. So it just so happens that our neighbors were at the theater. They were going to see Friday the 13th. And I remember my mother and my sister talking to them. And, you know, I'm still like, teary eyed man like glossy and just like oh i want to go see this i want to go see baby bro can i tell you that from the opening scene of this film we gonna get into it y'all from the opening scene of this film it had me i was hooked when i left the theater i knew this was my favorite movie period yeah. there was no there was no substitution i absolutely loved it Fast forward, that was 85, 86. My mother and my sister and I moved to Alaska, Anchorage, Alaska. That's where my dad was stationed at. My, me and my sister were playing around the house, tripped over a, a cable cord, because you know, back then you just run a cable everywhere. Uh, tripped over a cable cord and knocked the TV off a TV stand wow. in my dad's bedroom. Broke the TV. So this is no back in the day, big back TVs. That thing broke. We got put on punishment. We couldn't, we weren't allowed to watch TV for like the, the duration of the summer. However many weeks were left, whatever. So every day we happened to have a recording of The Last Dragon. Every day me and my sister would watch The Last Dragon at least once or twice. And we made sure the TV was turned off early enough so that when my dad came home, he put his hand on the back of the TV to see if it was warm to make sure we weren't watching it. <laughs> But we, we made sure we had it turned off about an hour or so ahead of time. But we watched that movie every single day. I know that one summer we watched that movie at least like 75 times, at least. And we knew it back to front, back to front. That story connects to us going to see Howard the Duck. But that's a whole separate story. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's that's how my love grew for this movie. And I just want people to know that up front, man. It's not just like... A movie I saw once when I was a kid and I loved it. No, I've seen this movie I don't, countless times, countless times. Right. So I want to hand it over to you, Alex. Do you happen to have a story about this film before we actually get into the movie? Wow. Uh, I was 13 when I saw it. Uh, it just Actually, I just turned 13 because it came out uh, March 22nd of 85. So I was 12 going into 13. And during that time period, man, I mean, I, man, I was, I was a classic nerd, man. I had a comic book collection. I was all in the heroes, uh, particularly, uh, I had a big thing for Steve Rogers, Captain America. 
Um, and I actually took tumbling classes just so that I could try to do some things like Steve Rogers. Um, as far as uh, where I lived at, I, I grew up in the suburbs of Jersey. So I think it might have been maybe three black families on my on my street. Um, so this was a really pivotal time for me, man. I was trying to find myself. I was getting hit from both sides because <laughs> simple fact is, you know, the area, you know, of course, I'm I'm black trying to fit in. And even from my own people, you know, I always got that thing where like, you know, you're trying to be you're trying to be white, you know, and, uh, it's just really stressful. And of course, you know, yeah. during that time period, 13, 12, 13 years old, you're dealing with bullying. You're dealing with just trying to fit in, man. Mm -hmm. So I was always the odd man out because I was a I was a nerd. I was playing Dungeons and Dragons. I was doing all the things that the cool kids were not doing. But I had a love for this type of stuff. And uh, I remember that I didn't get a chance to see it in the theaters. But, you know, during that time, you know, we had cable and, and VCRs and stuff like that. When it aired on, I think HBO or Showtime, um, it was just before I got uh, – I got my own VCR. I went over to my buddy David's house because he, he had it taped. And when I watched it, I sat down and watched it. Like you said, from the beginning, man, I was just mesmerized. Because here I am, you know, a kid in Jersey, you know, trying to fit in, seeing these, you know, seeing these other heroes. And then, you know, there's Leroy Green. And I just said to myself, oh, my God, yeah. is this real? I mean, everybody watched Kung Fu Theater on the weekends. And, you know, I mean, yeah. during that time period, eight, the 80s, it was saturated with just – a lot of ass yeah. kicking, and you had ninjas. You know, Sokasugi was doing the ninja series. He had, you know, Enter the Ninja, Revenge of the Ninja, Ninja Three: The Domination. That had, uh, I think, uh, Lucinda Dickey was in it. That was the ninja, the, like the apex of the ninja craze, almost, man. And yeah. you know, Chuck was doing it, man. He had, you know, uh, freaking mission and act, missing in action, and you know, you had Sly was doing his thing, Arnold was doing his thing. So representation was was like lacking. And then to see this film, man, it gets, true. It just blew my mind because, you know, again, the, I think this film was centered around, you know, finding yourself, finding self. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's hard for me not even to get <laughs> emotional about it, man. Yeah. Just so many things happen. And this film really gave me the tools that I needed to pick the right steps and to take the right path and not mess myself up. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's still, yeah. it's still here today, you know. So I can't get this film. I can't give them enough love, man. I can't get this film enough yeah. love. So. Absolutely, absolutely. And now you mentioned the representation, the only real like kung fu ninja movie type representation we had in the eight early eighties. Because in the seventies you yeah. had the black exploitation and everything. Right, but right. In the early eighties, in the early eighties was a little different. And only real representation you might have had is like uh man, what is the brother's name? I think it's Steve James, uh the one that was in uh, the American Ninja movies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If he played like the and side was for the movie. Yeah. Right, right. But he was always kind of like the better part of the movie, in my opinion. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, you didn't, yeah, you didn't get a lot of those. And he played Kung Fu Joe on uh, I'm Gonna Get You Sucker. I'm Gonna Get You Sucker, right, right. <laughs> um, but, you know, like you said, we didn't have that representation. And yeah. Bruce Leroy just collectively blew our minds. Yeah. Because it combined two things that that people that really black people love. They love Bruce Lee and they love to see a right. brother on TV kicking some ass. Yeah. <laughs> and Plenty of that. It, it perfectly combined <laughs> those, it perfectly combined those things, man. It was like bringing Jim Kelly and those guys back into the eighties with like a new yes. a new flair on. And yes. let's I mean, can't like you said, you can't say enough about the impact that the movie has on us. Right. So Y'all are going to see when we end up talking about this movie that we probably go on like 30 different tangents just because <laughs> right. there's so right. many branching paths. There's so many branching paths with this movie, places to go. Uh, but to start, I want to mention that this movie is directed by uh, Michael Schultz, who also did another movie the same year that we previously talked about, uh, Crush Groove, another yeah. classic from the 80s. You know, this guy also directed Car Wash. Michael Schultz is a legend in the game when it comes to like black directors because, like I said, representation, it wasn't a whole lot. So these guys had to really do something special to make an impact, you know? Right, right. Just getting into where this movie even came from, the uh, writer, 
it's uh, Louis Benosta, yeah, Benosta, mm -hmm. came up with this idea. I think it was he said he went to the went to a theater. They were doing a tenth anniversary tenth anniversary screening of Enter the Dragon, right. and he said the crowd was kind of like raucous and it was just a great time and everything. And that kind of sparked the idea for this movie, and it's and it directly sparked the idea for the theater scene in the movie. Fast forward to now, he actually got the rights back to this film because wow. he did have the rights, but he got them back after 35 years. So he's actually working on uh, a new script for a follow-up. We don't know if it's going to be a sequel or follow-up remake, whatever, but right. he's actually working on a new version of this film now. So hopefully before you know, we lose any more of the co-stars, um, please. Time Max, <laughs> says he's, Time Max says he's, he's, he's already down. He's in it. Yeah. Hopefully this gets done in my lifetime, <laughs> yeah. please, because, yeah. you know, for, for good or bad, I got to see it. You know, we, we had a uh, time act, of course, which uh, we played uh, Leroy, um, just did a phenomenal performance. And to come to find out that, that he wasn't even an actor, he was a martial artist. Um, yeah. and he was bought in, I think, by uh, Ron Van Cleef. He was a student of Ron Van, yeah. Van Cleef. And I think that they were trying to find a lead man and he just so happened to, you know, have uh, Time Mac and he said, hey, this guy is going to be perfect. But the big thing about for me for Time Mac was the fact that he was so genuine when the, the when the role, you know, in the role when he played Leroy, he was just yeah. very humble, just, you know, he, what you saw was what he was, you know, not anything overbearing. And that really added a lot of richness and sincerity to the film, man. It just because you were yeah. following him again, you know, me being 13 seeing this guy kind of understanding how he felt in different situations and being unsure of himself just i mean we were sharing the same skin <laughs> you know yeah um you, you also had vanity um vanity uh let me see vanity's name i'm sorry man her, her real name is denise is denise, it, matthews, denise matthews yeah yeah uh, absolutely wonderful wonderful woman I, I i again you know i get into uh you know the females <laughs> that in our films from childhood, man, everybody's crushed. Instantly crushing on her, big time, man. Yeah. Instantly crushing on her. Just again, just a very sincere, wonderful uh, performance that she gave uh, in this film. Uh, and also uh, Julius Carey, who played Shona. Yeah. Um, he had uh, he's already an actor, established actor, and as a villain, I would say protagonist. He really gave us that feeling of oh shit <laughs> you know you, yeah. besides darth vader man i can't tell tell you anybody else that Bruh. sat on screen and was shook like this man would seriously choke slam me a thousand times right you know and like how how is leroy gonna beat this guy man this is just mm -hmm. ridiculous the odds that he had stacked up against him man um just they picked the right person right from jump man um i think Perfect. i read somewhere that he that he did a little bit of maybe bodyguarding for Michael Jackson at one time. I'm not sure, but I yeah. think I did. I do remember reading that, but he did an outstanding performance, man. Made it really believable and made us actually fearful for Leroy. So that was, that yeah. was spot on, man. Spot on. Um, of course, you had uh, Leo uh, O'Brien, uh, who, yeah. who played Richie, which was um, Leroy's brother. You talking about a character arc, man. This kid went through all different yeah. kinds of changes, man. Um, saying some of the things that he said in the film to his brother, you know, I could relate, you know, just being out of place and just adding to that heaviness of trying to find yourself. And, you know, even in my own family is, is, is putting me in a box type deal. Uh, yeah. He did a, for him to be so young, he really did a, a outstanding performance. But again, he, again, he yeah. comes from TV too. He did tons of TV. You know, but he yeah. really did. He was real natural. Man. Yeah, he was real oh, natural. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. When you said his brother, it just, it, they just, the bond was there, man. I saw that. I was like, just, yeah. man, I'd smack him around. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know you're yeah. always hating like you know him. sibling yeah. hate. He just bought the sibling yeah. hate out of you. You know what I'm saying? But it was the hate so, and the love, you know? Like they loved each yeah. other, but, you know, they had that, that rivalry, that sibling rivalry. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I, I can't, Christopher, the, the main villain, Eddie Arcadian. Christopher, yeah. uh, what's his last name? Uh, Murney, oh, Murney, right. uh, Murney, yeah, yeah, Murney, yeah. He played. Uh, I mean, for me, 
I thought that Eddie Arcadian was, you know, being a comic book head at the time, I thought Eddie Arcadian was kind of like a carbon copy of the villain that the Fantastic Four was always going up against Arcade. You know, you kind of had that that mob boss, and he was like, yeah. you know, the owner of like the biggest David Busters for that time period, and for him right. to be producing videos at the same time, and he had his hands dipped in the streets. So it's just perfect to me, man. You know, he, he had little man syndrome, which I can relate to a lot. You know, he had like that Joe <laughs> Pesci, that Joe Pesci thing going on, and it just fit. It yeah. fits so well, man. You know, so great villain, great villain. Great, yeah, yeah. And and yeah. this is one thing when you know movies have either a great villain or a great pair of villains. And this movie has a great pair yeah. of villains. You remember them both for separate reasons. You know, showing up is showing enough. And you know, he's you can't be yeah. a show enough. But you also remember Eddie <laughs> Arcadian. You know, yeah. his change. He did a change in the film too. He came. He went from being in you know kind of like annoyed with Leroy's presence almost to it becoming an obsession like he you know now you disrespected me yeah. in front of my men now i gotta take care of you you know what i'm saying so he really did like yeah he went all the yeah. way left with it you know so he became you know leroy became his white whale and he said you yeah know, i gotta i gotta get this guy and um uh, yeah he was trying to get his his girlfriend on um angela faith prince is her name and she was like the she was like the um cindy lopper type uh pop singer who he was trying to get yeah. on to get big and you know she played a great role and everyone is everyone did great in this movie yeah yeah she, her, her performance was was outstanding man i mean couldn't ask for yeah. more coming from you know her character she just knocked it out of the park mm-hmm. believable much yeah. so much believable for her you know what she did yeah and that voice you know her voice is just really <laughs> it's really distinct you know right right <laughs> Said, shut up. Glenn Eaton, yeah, he played Johnny U. Johnny U. Yeah. And you yeah, think Johnny, he, he, Johnny he was played that like role, the, man. Yeah, he was like kind of like the comedy relief almost, man. Yeah. Now you got the, I don't know if this was the debut or not for Ernie Reyes Jr. Yeah, his character's name was, uh, I think his character's name was Ty. I think his name was Ty. T A I. Uh, Ty, yep. Ty, Ty. yeah. You know, he's a little kid, but he got cast late in the production of the film, which is why he only shows up in like the second half of the movie. Mm, okay. Because you don't see him at all until like the to like the last, almost the last third of the movie. Right. Because he was cast late, but Ernie Reyes, his dad, was one of the stunt coordinators in the film. Right. And he brought him on. He brought him on, and that's when they have that big brawl in the in the disco later on. The guy he's fighting with the camouflage uh, clothing on is his dad. Oh man, okay. That's, that's Ernie know. Reyes. Yeah, that's Ernie Reyes Senior. Senior. And okay. you can, you can, okay. yeah. When you go back and when, when you know that, and you go back and watch it, you can tell that like he, he's taking perfect care to make sure his son hits all his marks, and it's right. it's really nice when you actually watch it. Yeah. And <laughs> you mentioned uh, Ron Van Cleef earlier. Ron Ron Van Cleef was also one of the stunt people on the film. And uh, fight right. coordinators, and he's in a scene. He's in a scene with the uh, like hockey Jason hockey mask on. He's uh, whipping Leroy with a chain. That's from what I from what I can find from my research. That is Ron Van Cleef. Wow, that was after he got body slammed. I remember that part. Wow, yeah, that was him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this Ron movie, Van the cast in this movie is perfect. Right. Ron Van Cleef, and I think they had another guy. His name was. Uh, George Mathis, I think, and from what I was understanding was that Ron Van Cleef was was critiquing um, Shonuff's character as far as like his fighting style, and then George was the one that was more like a more of a finesse uh, type fighter. So he was the one that was critiquing uh, Timac Timac uh, character uh, Leroy. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of neat to have that they were both working with separate people to make you know the the, the martial arts yeah. style believable so and they did a great job because it, it was the difference between the fighting styles was night and day man definitely and, yeah you know, yeah showing up showing up as a brawler and leroy is more yeah. finesse finesse definitely um, definitely and that that yeah you, that definitely shines through you can tell that especially since julius carey had no martial arts experience he was right, just really right. athletic 
And you could tell from watching the movie, he's just a really athletic. He's ripped. I'm sure no oh, yeah. ripped. Yeah, he, 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 <laughs> yeah, all that lean mass. That's exactly. Right. Exactly. So and he's six foot five, man. So you know he was just athletic and he could do whatever. You know, and and that's another thing, you know, a lot of actors, you don't you don't always you don't always see height in movies. Right. But you can tell that showing up is just taller than everybody in this movie. Oh yeah. Oh my God, man. So and, many times he's so many different makes him so intimidating. Right. Yeah. So many different times he's yeah. just standing yeah. looking down. You know, I was like, oh man. Yeah. <laughs> Me, I'm five. Yeah, think four, about so you know think I about like <laughs> <laughs> think about like camera angles and everything. Like as, as far right. as I remember, like you never you never see an angle looking down on show enough. No. Nah. It's always no. kind of looking up. And it's like that intimidation factor where he's always looking down at you, you know? Mm-hmm. And it just makes him more intimidating. Right. Right, but they definitely did it. That that is spot on. <laughs> so yeah, let's. I mean, let's get into the movie. You know, we, we're going to end up talking about the cast and everything as we go through the film itself, right. um, and the stunt work. And just before I, before we do that, I just want to mention that the filmmakers here did one of the most excellent jobs of hiding the stuntmen. Mm. So, like the person who did the stunt work for Leroy. Honestly, until rewatching it again recently and knowing what to look for, right? Did I ever notice that there was a stunt man in place of Leroy? Yeah, that was his name was uh, Jeff Jeff Ward, Jeff Ward. Yeah. And crazy enough, man, I, I'm glad you mentioned that because I, I I didn't want to forget this part. You know, Jeff is has been active for a while. He he did Blade Blade Two. He did Hellboy. Yeah. I mean, he, he did the Equalizer uh, with, with um, yeah. Queen Latifah's Equalizer. Yeah. So he's, he's oh, that behind one, yeah. the scene. He, yeah, he did the, uh, he did, uh, he was in, I think he was working with Spike, man, because he did, uh, uh, was it the uh, the Five Bloods? Um, he did Old oh. Boy, which of course was uh, with Spike's uh, re- reimagining of the, Remake. Uh, the, the Korean yeah. film. Yeah, and he did Glass with uh, with Sam. You know, they had that, and, and oh, with okay. Sam and, um, who else was in the film? Bruce Sam Willis. and uh, Bruce Willis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The superhero. Yeah. Thing, so, yeah. yeah. So he was behind the scenes, man. Nice. And again, you know, you see he was yeah. working. I mean, it's beautiful. Everything turned out beautiful. Yeah. Man. And there's another thing we're going to end up talking about. We're going to talk about this forever. But we're going <laughs> to talk about the soundtrack as we talk about this movie. Because uh, the soundtrack yeah. is absolutely stellar. That could be an entire video itself. Yeah. The soundtrack of this yeah. movie is amazing. But to start out, this movie just has one of the best action movie, 80s movies, whatever you want to call it. One of the just best openings of a movie. Because it starts out and that, that beat drops and you see Leroy practicing, practicing his martial art alone. There's no one else. And that, you know, that song is playing and it gets you, it pumps you up. It gets you into this movie. Like you, you feel you haven't seen anything and you feel like you already know what's happening. Like you already know what kind of movie you're about to get into because it pumps you up right from the beginning, right from the beginning. And you get that iconic, yeah, you get that iconic scene of his, his master shooting the arrows at him. Right. And Leroy chops one of the arrows. Yeah, out of the out of midair, which was an actual thing that he did. Now, of course, they probably you know slow. They, they didn't shoot the arrow full speed. Whatever, who cares? Yeah, to actually be able to do that. Period. It's just you know it's it's amazing. He really did yeah. hit that arrow. Of all the things you could fake in a movie, you know they decided not to fake that one. Right, right. And that gets you ready for this movie. You're like, oh man, this. He's a badass already, man. He's he's up here, the music playing, he's flexing. You know what I'm saying? He's flexing, wow. body glistening and everything. Like, oh yeah, yeah, I want to see this. This yeah. seven year old me, my mind changed at the at the beginning of this movie. Absolutely. Like, oh, okay, this might be good. <laughs> so you sitting there, you sitting there doing it with him, like, oh man, this right. is a badass job. Right, uh, right, right. He's doing like jump kicks and all kinds of stuff, man. That shit is amazing. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 
But yeah, man, he's you know, it starts out he's in the dojo with his master and he's trying to uh complete the uh what is it like the circle or whatever the thing is to get to his final level. His final level right. of mastery for his art. And the you know, the teacher tells him, you know, you you finish your training, essentially. Right. You know, now you need to go seek the master. If you want to become the master, you have to go seek the master. Is basically right. what he tells him. He gives him like a, a medallion. He says, you know, go seek the master. Some dumb goy, which we find out later, some bullshit. But yeah, yeah, it's all all a farce. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Leroy's just like he's like he's almost apologetic, like because he, he's so humble. He's right. so humble, right? You know, he's kind of asking the master, like, "What did I do wrong?" He's like, "No, get up. What are you doing? You've been watching too many movies." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the the biggest part of that 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 scene that that I wanted to share with you, man, I think is the fact that uh, you know once he uh, knew without knowing, and he caught the because they were shooting the different colored arrows at him, and he caught the the blue one, which I guess was the master's way of him, you know, kind of like just subliminally doing something without even knowing what he was doing. Um, you saw the, the the different the picture scale with the circles and stuff. And that last, you know, he had the last dragon in that new circle was at top. And he was telling him that, you know, that's the journey that you have to go on alone. But if you, you know, unbeknownst to us, he basically breaks down the reasoning right there because he says, you know, this new, this new circle that needs to be filled by you, you've got to embrace certain life things. You know, you've got to embrace fear, love and vengeance. And only then will you be able to break through to the, the final level and achieve the glow. Confusion is a part of life. As our vengeance. And he told it to us, just plain and simple. You know, everything we needed was right there. You know, I didn't realize that until watching it way later, being this old. I'm like, this yeah. man broke down a whole film right there. And sure yeah, enough, again, just, through yeah. the film, he embraces all of those different emotions before before he breaks through. You know. Yeah. So yeah. I thought that that was, that was unbeknownst to us, but at the same time it was crazy <laughs> that they had the blueprint right there in front of us. You know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> brilliant. That's, that's brilliant movie writing and, and screenplay. Absolutely. It's just, it's just, yeah, it's just, that's what makes a great movie great. Those little things like that, right. that you subconsciously, you don't even think about it. Right. But when you go back and revisit it, you're like, oh man, this is even better than I thought it was. They so just told me the whole movie in the first right. five minutes. Another thing that I really like about the beginning of this movie is that one of our main villains is introduced within like the first couple scenes because as yeah. soon as Leroy leaves the, the dojo and here's the thing, we learned something about Leroy here at the beginning. He comes out of the dojo. He's got like the, the Asian outfit on with the hat, like the triangle hat. And they're like, oh, okay, this dude's different. Like already. Right. You no, know, he 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 lives. Hardcore, he lives hardcore into the lifestyle. Right, <laughs> right, right. You know, he's he's dedicated. Yes, he goes to the movie theater. He goes to the movie theater, and they're showing a screening of Enter the Dragon. And yeah. the the way the camera pans around the theater, man, you see it's it's kind of it's kind of raucous in there. Everybody's talking and laughing and joking, and popcorn and stuff everywhere. And there's all kinds of people in there, like gangsters, regular yeah. people, thugs, whatever. Yeah, there's some of everybody in this theater. This joint's crazy. This is when you get the introduction of all introductions. Ugh. This might this this wow. has to be my favorite introduction of any character ever in a movie, period. <laughs> Cause who oh, else man. comes in like this? It not only you didn't come into a place Everyone. that was like Right. He didn't come into some public place. You know, I mean, he he might as well have kicked the doors open into a library and did this. Because right. you, you you imagine you're sitting in a the theater and some dudes, goons, kick the door open, yeah. line up, and then this dude walks down the middle of like a soul train line almost. And they're yelling like, who's the master? Yeah. Yeah. And and he's talking about am I the pretty am I the meanest am I the prettiest, and 
Man, Not like the baddest mofo. Yeah. Uh, low down around this town. Show now. Am I the baddest mofo low down around this town? Show. Exactly. And every you see the people in the theater like, who is this guy? You know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. he don't care because he's letting you know who he is right now. Exactly. They even he stopped. They even stopped the finger. movie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Everything stopped. Yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, like, what's the more what's what's more pimp than that? Like, you just come in and just declare who you are and what's going to happen. Exactly. And he says, you know, exactly. these seats. You know, they go find them seats. And like, this is shows row. Mm -hmm. Move. Blah blah blah. And you hear the kid. <laughs> you hear the kid. I know who can beat you. <laughs> yeah. I know who can beat you. Yup. Yeah. <laughs> I know who can beat you. Who said that? They're showing us like who beast, said that? Beast, beast who, who said, said that? that? <laughs> he's like, I got him. Show I got him. And he said, "Little, little ass he said, I know who can beat you. <laughs> <laughs> I know who can beat you, Bruce Leroy. That's who." Bruce Leroy, and you see Bruce, you see, you see uh, Bruce Leroy, you see Leroy just sitting, he's watching the movie front row, eating the, eating the popcorn with his chill. chopsticks now, which, which is crazy, mm -hmm. eating popcorn with chopsticks. He chill, <laughs> he ain't paid show enough, no attention, not nab bit. No mind. None. He's chewing on the popcorn, watching the movie. Show enough walks over there, and like I said, chill enough is just intimidating. He's intimidating. Yeah. And Leroy literally pays his man no attention. No mind, yeah. Show enough steps in front of him, <laughs> starts throwing blows like right in front of his nose. You know, if it ain't the serious. <laughs> Leroy Green. Yep. Leroy Green. Yep. <laughs> he was like, Didn't he's even looking flinch, at the crowd. Man. Like, Didn't even flinch. Right. He said, like, catches bullets with his teeth. Teeth. <laughs> catches bullets. With his teeth, and this is this is another thing where they they lay an Easter egg, right? They 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 lay something on you at the beginning of the movie that you don't think about, that doesn't come up again ever until the very end of the movie, and it doesn't come up in speech; right. it comes up in an actual scene. It's brilliant. That is brilliant movie making. Yeah, yeah. But it's like at like, that point you're fun, you're, you're hearing it and you're. Exactly. And you're like, you're like joking, like, get the hell out of here, man. You know, but it's right. crazy how that part, it's almost like they, their reputations had perceived them already. Like, obviously, Preceded there's them. some talk because how is this kid going to even know anything like that unless it was whispers? Mm -hmm. He heard it from somewhere, you know, mm -hmm. and that to me just leaves more lore that we don't know about. There's so much to this film right. that they could actually go back and do before this that would actually just add more fluff to what we have already seen right man. so and that's one of those things that as you know as as black folks we something that we understand is that yeah. whispers and stuff get around in the hood yes if you yes. do something once and anyone was there to witness it it gets around it's gonna get and around it's like yeah. it becomes it's the telephone game it's the telephone game you know every time somebody yep. hears it it gets embellished just a little bit yeah and now, you know, he's a legend in the hood. Yeah. And nobody, you know, who knows who's actually seen him catch a bullet with his teeth. But no that legend, no you know, turn, come to find out, that legend is for real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bro, this, this movie's brilliant, man. This movie's brilliant. But, you know, Absolutely. show enough is, is seemingly unimpressed with the legend yeah. of Bruce Leroy. Like, he even tells him, nigga, please. Ninja, I got something real for your ass in these hands. <laughs> I got something real for your ass in these hands. He said, come on, Leroy. Come on. Leroy ain't paying on no mind. And then those those guys in the audience were like, won't you sit down and shut up? Why don't you sit down and shut up? What? Why don't I sit? And then, so this is where you know, shut up is real. Shut up a real dude, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because show enough, stop. He stopped. Didn't pay no more attention to Leroy. He's like, "What? What? Why don't I why sit don't down I sit and down what? And what? Mm -hmm. Why don't you sit down and shut up?" 
why don't anyone who want me to sit down and shut up <laughs> come down here and make me sit down and shut up? How about any 50 of you who want me to sit down and shut up, come down here and do it just for the fun of it? <laughs> exactly. And yeah. 50 of you. So you uh-huh. get like... <laughs> So you get like these random people that just want to get up and fight showing up. And first of all, the dudes that was up top telling him to sit down. Like, come on, man. These these two like brawly looking dudes. One of them got a halter top on, a pink halter top. Yeah. Yeah. That's not yeah. tough looking. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but like the dude, the dude in the audience looks like a like a big Native American type type guy. He gets I, that was crazy. Even as a kid, even as a kid, I knew his date was a man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like there was yeah. no there was no ambiguity to that. <laughs> right. And because he gets okay. up and this is the same guy that stomped oh, on the uh on the on the stereo. I forgot he stomped on the boom box earlier. Yeah. Smashed the Sony boom um, box. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he gets up, man. He's the first one to try to go get a piece of uh Shonoff, man. And and Shonoff just dodges the punch, grabs him by the hair, bangs his head on the stage, pulls out the hair, blows it, Rock and him. and dude's date like he was like, mess him up, baby. Mess him up, baby. Don't hurt that face, baby. Don't hurt that face, baby. <laughs> yup, yup. <laughs> like, oh, <Stop>. man. <laughs> yup, oh, yup, yup. Oh, man. And, and show yeah, enough to guys come down to just get kicked. Yup. <laughs> get kicked in the face, man. Showing up fighting everybody that wants to come up there. The one dude comes up and catches him off guard, kicks him in the chest. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Kicks him in yeah. the chest, and 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 Julius Curry really did do that 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 kick flip off the floor. So like this dude six five, he really did do that. So you know he's athletic. In my best shape, I've never been able to do that. All right, nah, me neither. I've been struggling. So, always struggle. Always struggle with the <laughs> Always did. Yeah, <laughs> I could never do it. So mm-hmm. so show enough jumps up, and I wonder. Um, I didn't catch. When I was looking up the uh, info for the movie, uh, who that guy was that actually did that kick. I'm not sure if it was one of the stunt people in the movie or whatever. Um, right. I think he might be uncredited, I I but I might have to check again. Mm-hmm. But he looked like a legitimate martial artist. Yeah, the way he threw the kick up, was man, legit. Get, yeah. 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 He gets into his stance. Man, show sure enough, get up there and trip him up and, and says, you'll never use his ankle again, man. Yeah. And twist it three or four times and then and then bit his Achilles. Man, oh. Bit it, exactly. I feel like he bit it so yeah. hard. That joint rolled up like a lampshade, man. Like, oh. You bite somebody's Achilles <laughs> like that, man. Oh. It's just tendons. <laughs> and and show sure enough, he's looking and he see you see Leroy, who's not paying no attention, get up and walk out. Mm-hmm. Walking out the back door of the theater, and he's like, "You know, you will fight me, Leroy. You know, you." Will. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's it's yeah. crazy because when he said that, he was he was basically proclaiming his intentions. He's like, "I will not rest until everybody knows Shogun is the master." Oh, no. And Leroy yeah. was like, right, "Close the door." He's like, "You wimp." <laughs> <laughs> He was like, I don't know who you're trying to impress me. You ain't you, you ain't impressing me, so I'm leaving. Yeah, this this movie. Oh, so this movie has so many quotable lines. You could spend you could spend an hour just talking about quotable lines from this movie. And this movie plays out, man, like uh, almost like an extended music video. Yeah, it's you, yeah. The music is yeah. used cleverly, man, cleverly to keep you in, engaged, man. Yeah, because basically, right after that theater scene, that's when you first see um, Lord Charles's uh, studio. Or does it go to Eddie Arcadian? On the one I think it goes. To, I think we meet Eddie. I think we met eight, met yeah. uh, Eddie Arcadian first. I think yeah, because he's trying to tie his tie, yeah. and then you, you know you see his girlfriend on the couch, and you, you meet Rock for the first time, and yeah. uh, they're talking about um, uh, getting her, making her be a star, and then you see like the relationship between Eddie and Rock wasn't kind of solid as you would have thought because Rock, of course, wanted to be this this uh, heavyweight heavyweight boxer champion and yeah. he ended up losing and then rock i mean and then eddie kind of like just said you know you're you're a wash up you're not going to be any use to me and just kind of like dead in him so there's an animosity between eddie you know emphasizing so much on his girlfriend and, and just kind of like leaving him out to dry you know what i mean yeah so he said yeah, yeah like what she's going boy do. and he kind of yeah it, exactly 
And he's like, whatever, what she's yeah. going to do is going to, yeah. going to revolutionize, rev- revolutionize everything, make people do something they've never done before. And of course, Rocky's like, what? Make him run for cover? Yeah. You know, he's still hating like a mom. He's <laughs> ready for cover. <laughs> <laughs> right, hilarious, man. yeah, Rock. Yeah, he's still a little like, yeah, tight. Yeah, he's still a little tight about that. <laughs> yeah. So you like every gives, fighter, you gotcha. like, Exactly, it gives you that insight that this guy's a user. Like Eddie Arcadian is just like he's just that that douchebag. You know what I'm saying? Like if you don't, yeah. you're not. You know, you're not in his best interest. And whatever, man, I'm just gonna toss you aside. You know, you yeah. be a, a boot heel for me. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's trying to get he's trying to get uh, his girlfriend's video played on Vanity Show, right. and um, Laura. Seven. I'm sorry, Laura Charles. Yep. Um, he's trying Laura to get his Charles. video played on on Seventh Heaven Show because you know back in the day, man, a music video would, could just blow. It's not like it is now. Everything's so saturated. He only had a few right. options to watch music videos, and everyone was watching the same video. So right. he really wanted to get his girl on on Laura's show. She had the biggest show, I guess, you know, maybe in the area, you know, the New York, Jersey, Philly area, whatever. But right. well, maybe, I don't right. even know. It didn't really say if it was national or anything. They didn't say it was like a national show, but it was definitely like big. Laura. No, they didn't. Mm-hmm. Definitely. But yeah, he's like kind of desperate to get his girl's video there. And <clears throat> he's he's going to try to, you know, make an offer to, to, to Laura to get the video on. And that's kind of the catalyst of a lot of the events that happen throughout the rest of the movie. Yeah. He's one of those guys that can't take no for an answer again. And I, I, and that's letting yeah. you know, like he's, he's got this, this ego thing about him where, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm Eddie Arcadian. I'm the, the video game King. Nobody tells me no. You know what I mean? Like he's right. some kind of boss, some, some mob boss or something like that. Yeah. Soon after we get um, Laura, we meet Laura for the first time. If anybody watching this right. doesn't understand, DeBarge was a pretty famous group already. And right. from what I remember, this is the only video where they were all together. Yeah. But yeah. DeBarge was a huge, huge group already. And L. DeBarge was just, if you, first of all, if you were light skinned back in the day, you were already, you already had an advantage. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's be real about it. Let's be real about it. Right. So he had light skin, you know, the curl and everything. And you know, everybody loved Elder Bars, man. And yeah. when Rhythm of the Night came out, man, that song was absolutely huge. Yeah. Like, we can't say enough about vanity. We're not I ain't gonna spend all day talking about this. <laughs> like when she yeah. let me just when she comes down when she comes down out of the uh out of the ceiling, man, it was like an angel coming down. Like So, so much charisma, so much presence, man. It just was, for yeah. me, being 13, I just sat, my jaw was, you know, yeah, just hang open like, oh, my God, this is absolutely right. wonderful. <laughs> right, right. Like, an actual fantasy on screen, man. Like, she, yeah, she was she's just absolutely incredible. The whole crowd's going wild and everything, man. So you kind of get your introduction to who Laura Charles is, man. She's an entertainer. She's got, like, her own show, kind of like Soul Train, but, you know. She's right. the main attraction, and she she debuts videos. Um, I said Soul Train, but it's actually more like like Video Soul back in the day. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, she's inter- soul, she's definitely. introducing uh, new artists and videos, and and you know, so of course at this point you've heard like a great intro, some great background music, and then you get this song <laughs> from Laura Charles, and then you get to the beat of the rhythm of the night, and you just you're just having a. Well, I'll tell you, man, young me in the theater, I was having a freaking ball and this movie's only been on like 15 having a blast minutes. having a blast yep absolutely and yeah we're we're early <laughs> on into this movie at this point right uh after i think like right before her performance for for when she sings the song seven heaven you kind of find out that uh eddie arcadian had like an inside guy that was trying to get her persuade her to uh play the movie and of course she turns him down um because she says she's booked and uh, he's like telling her, look, this guy's heavy, man. He's a heavy hitter. Could you just do this as a favor for me, please? Because he's not going to be he's not going to be happy if I go back to him and tell him that you said no. And she says this, this, yeah. this scene, this, this, what she says was iconic to me. Like, look, my life is not filled with all of this craziness. You know, that gives you an idea yeah. of 
she's just like a working girl. She's trying to work on her her fame and 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 the show, and she doesn't really have a lot of disruptions, a lot of craziness going on. So of course he gets in contact with uh, Eddie, calls Eddie Arcadia and says, "Hey," she says, "No, man, you know she's not gonna play your stuff on the show." Um, and he's just like, "What? What do you mean? And, uh, she's not gonna play?" And he's like, "Nobody." He says, "Nobody turns down an invitation from Eddie Arcadia." Mm-hmm. That lets you know this guy. He's like, you know, my boss to the fullest. You know. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. And his inside guy just happened to be uh, the screen debut for William H Macy. Right, William H Macy. Yep. Yeah, that was this his first movie. Exactly. His first movie. He's only in like two scenes in the movie, but you know, this, it was his first movie. So. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. And you, you see that. The, the way the club, the structure of the club is set up, man, they almost, it was almost like, it reminded me of like American Bandstand or, or whatnot. It's just like you had your little, like they actually had the little cloud crowd uh, set up where all the younger yeah. up and coming, you know, people were, it was a lot of dancing. You know, they probably had their own dancers like Soul Train, but they probably had, you know, floor filled with extras as well. So it was really nice, a really yeah. decent setup. So like you were saying, it, it's one of those shows where it was probably one of the top shows that was watched at the time, you know, in that, in that yeah. universe. So I, I thought that yeah. was a, a nice extra that they threw in there. Laura's uh, leaving, and of course Eddie Arcadian was trying to he's trying to make his point. He's trying to get Laura to his place to, right. to basically force her to watch the video, right? And to, be, and to get it on her up. on his show. And you know Laura's coming out. She's got like a crowd of groupies around her trying to get an autograph and everything. And you know she makes her way. She's making her way to the car. I see Leroy walking down the street. So yeah, then they make the innocent eye contact, and Laura's get Laura gets in the car, and Leroy he's still he's he's enthralled like like the rest of humanity looking at Vanity. That's just because <laughs> right. that's what happens if you look at her. Yeah, you, it's like a deer in the headlights, man. Yeah, the soft music's playing in the background, man. So you get that you get that one little scene of. Like, okay, there's an instant connection, like almost like love right. at first sight. She's in the car and she's talking to the driver and she's like, uh, you know, it's like, it's not the usual driver. She says, you know, how you doing tonight, Sal? And he's like, Sal, I had to take the night off. You just relax in this Charles. <laughs> right. And she's like, hold up, where are you going? And he's checking the door. He's like, hold up, where are you going? Hey, what do you think you're doing? The right thing, Miss Charles, which is what you're going to do. He's like, you know, you just, you sit back and relax. Man, they, they they pull over the car because she's trying to get out and everything. And right. the guys are trying to get her back in. And one of them goes to hit her. And then you see this hand. Pop. Yep. Classic, classic 80s hero move, man. Somebody catches the hand. I would not do that if I were you. <laughs> and he commences to whooping their ass. Okay. I don't even know. I don't know if I know, like, for years, I wondered, like, was he was he running behind his car the whole time? How far was she driving? Yeah, you know, how far maybe he hit a couple corners and took a shortcut. But he whoops their ass. You know, there was like there was like three or four of them, three or four goons. You know, the one black guy. Yeah, but I think it was about four. And of them. he just yeah. destroys all of them. Laura's like, oh, oh my goodness, I can't believe you know. I'm <laughs> so glad you were here. And this is blah 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 blah. He's like, are you okay? And he's, he's just being innocent, being his innocent self. You know, he ain't trying yeah, to get her gentleman. phone number or anything. And, you know, she gets a, she waves on a taxi or he, he waved down. Anyway, she's getting a taxi. Yeah, he waved. And did you see where that guy went? Yeah, he's like, I don't know. You know, she looks away and sees the the medallion that the master that his master gave him earlier is on right. the ground. <laughs> he did a Batman on her. Just bounce. Yeah. In a Batman hat. <laughs> so now she's got the now now she's got the medallion. She's got the medallion. She doesn't know who he is, you know where he's at. Where you know, well of course, soon after Leroy realizes that he dropped the medallion, he comes running back and he's like, "Oh my comes goodness, back. you know what do I do now? You know I need right. this medallion." Yeah, he's like, right. "I'm looking, looking around." He's like, "Oh my goodness, you know, like he's 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 distraught." Conscience is our guide. Conscience is our guide. Peace is our shelter. Because at this point, you don't really know that he has his own dojo. You don't, right. you don't really mention it. Right. And you get the scene with uh, this is where you first meet Johnny 
and other uh, his other uh, pupils. He's in the dojo. He's wearing the Bruce Lee tracksuit from Game of Death. Yeah, that that one piece, and you got to you got to have some confidence to wear some <laughs> shit like that. Yeah, you you, you got to have some serious confidence to wear some shit like that. This is where you, you get introduced to Johnny, and you know they're sparring. The kids are sparring, and the one black student <laughs> and Johnny are sparring, and and Johnny does like the whole like. I don't even want to do it, but the whole like Bruce Lee imitation. And he said, "Look, dudes are scared. They're scared of Oriental dudes. Mm. So you just gotta give them a look, <laughs> give them a little move." Afraid of Oriental dudes. Give them a little move, a little scream. And he said they're gonna be intimidated. Basically, he said, "I learned." Right. He said, "You know, you teach us the art of fighting with without art fighting. of fighting without fighting." He said, "I've mastered the art mm. of fighting, but I know how to fight." Not a fight, exactly. <laughs> and then they start, they, they start, to, and, the, and the black kid smacks him and knocks him down the first shot. Pow! You know? And that's when right. Johnny's laying on the floor, and that's when show enough people kick in the door again. Yeah. yeah. And show enough comes in, and he's like, I hear this dojo is for instruction in the martial arts. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm here for a lesson. <laughs> right, and he basically right. challenges Leroy to a fight. He, he challenges Leroy to a fight, and Leroy is basically like, "Nah, you know, I don't want to fight you, man." It's like basically, get the fuck out of here. I ain't worried about you. Stop, stop this shit. Right. And and show enough six the girls on. It's like you know, if you don't want to fight me, maybe one of them then. You know what I'm saying? He's like, "Girl, you know, maybe we get a rise out of this limp whip." Limp whip. <laughs> And the one girl's like, yeah, I love to peel this banana. You know, they're like walking around him and, and swinging at him and stuff. And the one girl, the one girl tapped him. Who looks scared to me? Oh. Yeah. yeah. Come on, Leroy. You know, she, she caught him. You know, bop. Hit him. And, and that's when we saw the, the switch. You know, Leroy went from innocent Leroy to, oh, I'm about to kick somebody's ass. Immediately. And then it's like he caught himself. He caught himself. He said, he stood back up. He said, okay, you know, I see you're trying to intimidate me and you're trying to get me off my square and I'm not going to let that happen. Right. And, and show enough, tries to take advantage of it. You know, he basically tells him, you know, you're going to show me some respect, you know, bow down, bow down to your master. Wow. And Leroy's like, I ain't, I ain't bowing down. Yeah, you talking down about? You get the fuck out of here, man. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. You talking about? Yeah. And and Johnny Johnny comes out there. You know, they try to yeah. try to do some, try to be intimidating, like he just said. How about you, stream being Rick James looking fool? Peace killing. He calls uh, show enough. You stream being Rick James looking fool, which at the time, <laughs> at the time, was pretty accurate. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, spot on, spot on. It's pretty accurate at the time. So then, you know, he's six beast on Johnny, and he chases him around. He grabs him, puts him in like basically like a full Nelson, and uh, or dope fiend. He put him in dope fiend. But yeah, he's like, yeah, bow down, or I'm gonna snap this clown in two. Right. So now, now, right. now, Leroy's like, damn it, Johnny, why don't right. you sit your ass down? You know what I'm saying, like. So now he got to bow down and, and show notes like, yeah, kiss my converse. Mm -hmm. And that's just one of the most gangster ass lines you can just say in a movie. <laughs> kiss my converse. Right. He, had some, he had some old Chucks on, you know what I'm saying? Chucks. Yep. And he, you know, he, he, yeah, he bows down, man. And he's like, basically, he just, he, he capitulates. He's like, man, look, I got to, I got to make sure my kid, when my students don't get hurt, you know, right. he's, he's trying intimidation fat. He's trying to punk me. It is, you know, my pride's bigger than that. I ain't worried about that. Right. He goes down to kiss the shoe and show enough kicks him in the face, man. And then leaves. Yeah. For him to achieve this goal of having Leroy accept the fight legitimately, you seeing the disappointment on it. Like he says, he's looking at the screen like you kind of see sideways, like, this ain't the way to do this. You know, this is not I want him to submit to me. I don't want this to happen like this. And I thought that that was awesome. Like he almost looked like like the whole situation was kind of like beneath him because he was pressing, you know what I'm saying? Right. But the message right. that he left, he was like, hey, you might not wish to fight me now, 
but you will. I'm gonna see to it. So you yeah. see, kind of like from that point on, he went on a certain. He did it. He did the pressure a certain way, and it was more traditional, kind of like the Shoguns and stuff like that. Because I, not to get off subject, but you know these warlords, these Shoguns, they they have to. You you gotta acknowledge the fact that they are top tier above you, and that they are the masters of your existence. Yeah. We saw a little bit of this kind of like, remember the, the movie, um, uh, the five Cripple Avengers, right? The Kung Fu yeah. movie. And you, you had this guy, you know, they were walking around with this big entourage, right? And every time he got in a situation where he was challenged, like the one guy that walked, walked out of the, uh, the, 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 the place, the, the bar, and actually bumped into him. And he was like, hey, you know, you need to watch where you're going. He was like, well, I didn't see you, so I'm sorry. Yeah. He's like, okay, well, you didn't see me. But that means you, you don't understand what your legs are doing. So he doesn't need those. Cut them off. So his entourage right. <laughs> cut his legs off, man. And it's like you have to have this big, it's like almost like this, this acknowledgement, like, you know, like I got to get you to submit a certain way. So that's why he goes on yeah. this route. But I'm telling you, man. As far as pressure, show enough was applying the pressure on this man. Like you, every time you turn around, he was popping up. Like this became an obsession for him almost, man. You know? Yes. Yeah. Isn't that nice? You know, we get introduced to his family, and uh, Keisha Knight Williams in this movie as you know little, little Rudy Huxtable. Little Rudy Huxtable. Yep. He's, he's got his chopsticks at the table, and. <laughs> You know, he's just he he's so into his uh, his art that it's like right. that's that that's who he is. That's just who he is. You know, he's not faking it. He's that he's like that all the time. Right. And of course, his brother Richie's like, you weird, man. You weird. Don't mess with no girls. You know, <laughs> wear funny clothes. People talk, you know, you're weird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Yep. laughs> And you know, you just get an introduction to the family, the dad, uh, Daddy Green. You know, just just uh, walk your pizza to Daddy Green's pizza. Yeah. And there was mother who she hardly acted in anything after this. She no, she didn't act at all after this. She did a few mm. things before this movie, but she didn't do anything after this. And she's still alive. Both of them, right. her and the father, are still alive. And they did an excellent job as the parents. They did an excellent oh, yeah. job in this movie. They're not in a whole lot of scenes either. But they seem really natural. They didn't have like a whole lot of acting experience, but they did a really great job. Yeah, you get that little introduction to like the family life of these these folks. You know, they all they love each other. Of course, Richie's gonna break Leroy's balls every any chance he gets. But <laughs> but otherwise, you know, you know, they love each other. And you know, they call a little girl three different names while they're at the table, and, and Richie's like, yeah. I wish y'all would decide on one name for this poor child. And that helps later on to to kind of cement what happens in their diner later on. Like it, it, right. it, it raises the stakes because now you know who these people are, you know that it's good caring people and you feel for them later on. Right. And that's where, like I said, some of the writing and the, and the direction in this movie is just, is really good because the unconscious things you don't think about, you know, make, they make the film better later. Yes. Yes. I agree with that. Yeah. And, you know, after, you know, we meet the family and you see, Laura on TV, and you see Richie. Richie's talking about that's my babe. That's my babe. Video hot pics of that's my babe, pops. To the top that's my dad. And Le Leroy sees it. And he's like, "That is her, right?" He's like, <laughs> and, that is her and from Richie's the other like, night. Yeah, that's yeah. Laura Charles. He's like, "Right." He said, "I would like to see her." And Richie's like, "I would like to see her. I would like to see her." <laughs> of course you would, you know. I would like to see him. No way the queen is gonna be looking at no walking fortune cookie. And and Richie starts talking about the the contest, that dance contest, to have a date with Laura. Right. And he's like he's gonna enter the contest. He's definitely gonna win for whatever for whatever reason. He definitely knew he was gonna win. Right. But Leroy is like, you know, I need to see her. I need to meet her. He doesn't say, you know, he doesn't just say, hey, like I helped her. I prevented her from being kidnapped last night. You know, he could have just said that, but. Right. Still, you know, he, he's like, I, I need to meet her. And Richie's like, look, man, you a cornball. Like, I, I don't know if I can have you hanging around me. In this right. Way. Just, just breaking your balls, me. man. Like, just, <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you might embarrass me. 
he's like, uh, look, you know, take me with you. And this is his little brother. Like you, you talking to your, your little, you talking to your little brother like he your daddy or something. Like take me with you. Yeah, I would like to meet her. So Richie sets down conditions, and and after they go, because they go to the they go to the diner, and they're like they're like setting up stuff in the diner in the shop. He's like he's telling him about he's giving him the whole conversation about birds and bees, basically. Exactly. You know, Richie's telling his older brother about what it's like to be with a woman, and you don't know what you're doing, and. And Richie comes across as somebody who probably don't know what he's doing either, but he likes talking yeah, about it. Yeah, just run off in the mouth. You know, yeah, <laughs> just run off in the mouth. Like he knows, he knows everything, but he probably don't have no yeah. experience either. Exactly. Yeah, he's like, you know, it'll hurt if you don't know what you're doing and this and that. You wouldn't even know what to put it if you know if you did. So just just screwing with him. And Leroy's like, you know, whatever. I don't care. I just need to meet Laura. Right. Right. And you know that's so he said you know uh, kiss my hand I'll take you kiss my <laughs> hand and I got to ride on your shoulders I, he's like I got to ride you got to let me ride on your shoulders and you got to rap he he got Richie on his shoulders Richie's got his now Richie was kind of fresh though he had the, he had the shirt man he had the matching hat right in the boombox and up on Leroy's shoulders and Leroy is trying to I, the worst <laughs> attempt at rapping <laughs> the worst attempt at rapping I've ever heard. Just, you know, he's like, do it, get it, yeah, baby, you know, do it. Right. <laughs> trying, trying it, trying his best. <laughs> you know, Richie's trying to get into the dance club now, and there's like a line, and they're walking up to the line, and Leroy's like, are you not going to pay? Richie, where are you going? Are you not going to buy tickets? <laughs> and Richie's like, whoa, 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 come here, come here, come here, man, come here. <laughs> Richie, Richie's slick. Richie, one of those slick little dudes, man. He always gonna trying to find a way to get over. Right. And I, I ain't gonna front. That probably would have been me, as Leroy. Like, hey, man, you ain't gonna pay. You know, we ain't getting line. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That would have been me. I would have asked that dumbass question. And and you know, we got to remember that you know, since there was a failed attempt to kidnap Laura Charles, that Eddie Arcadian has now come up with another scheme to to kidnap her again. So right. as as Leroy's waiting, as Leroy's waiting, you know, you see Laura come out the side door and his boy, uh, what was his boy's name? Rock. Rock. Yeah. As uh, you see Rock bringing uh, Laura out, he's like, yo, we got to do this sound test. You know, we got to make sure we strive for perfection. So she gets in the van. She's like, we should have done this already. They get in the van. The van drives off. Rock drops a clip. Gotcha. And right. And, you know, she kind of she kind of screams a little bit and. Leroy sees it and he picks it up and he's like, okay, it's like Eddie Arcadian. So now he knows, right. now he's got a target. He, right. he saw Laura, who was one he wanted to see, and now he knows where she's going and he knows who took her and he's also pissed off. Yeah. Yeah. And we get, you know, a exactly. great scene. And you, you, this is something that you told me about in the scene where he goes to rescue her. So I'm going to let you explain that. Right. So, you know, Laura gets back with uh, Eddie Arcadian, Rock brings her in, and uh, they're they're making her watch the video uh, of uh, uh, of his of his girlfriend, and she's trying to focus in on the video, but of course, it's just not that it's. I don't think it's it, it was her thing, you know. It's not the type of music that she yeah. you know wanted, you know, for the show. So, but she's trying to focus in, and then you can see it's it's the video that we got was crazy. Like you said, is this some yeah. generic pop <laughs> stuff that was going on like that that fit that time period? Yeah. Um, and she tells him yeah. flat out, you know, he's like, "Hey, everybody's clapping and stuff after the video's over." And, and Eddie Arcade is like, "Hey, you know, did I do you a favor or what? You know, so you're gonna play my video or what?" And she's like, "No, I'm not playing this mess." He's like, "No, nah. okay, I'm gonna nah. ask you again. Are you gonna play my video or not?" She's like, "The answer is no." And then she did, she did a solid by looking at old girl and was like, hey, it's not that it's, and it's not that I don't like it. It's not the right, and we never know what she meant by that. Would it be like not the right time right. because she was so booked or maybe not the right genre of music right. considering it was, you know, more right. like a Soul Train type show and then you've got some pop stuff going on. Yeah. It kind of would, I think it might bring yeah. the ratings down if anything, you know. So she's like, yeah. you know, it's not that I don't like it, it but it's just not the right exactly so then eddie yeah. takes that to heart he was like hey you know i was trying to do you a favor 
I was going to take you to a restaurant, you know, let you order a la carte, treat you like a queen and stuff. But, you know, you, you, you forced my hand. So he said, hey, Rock, let's get the tank, you know. And in the tank, you know, they, they've got that one big giant, I don't know what the hell that thing is, grouper or a big giant piranha or something, whatever's yeah. in that tank. It's some carnivorous <laughs> They had hair fish. on it, so I don't know what it was. <laughs> carnivorous <laughs> fish, so they're going to get her, setting her up to, to make her put her head in the tank, you know what I'm saying, to force her to play the video. And then the door swings open. Bam! The molding flies off, and then there's a ninja standing there. Who the hell is this guy? We didn't know the route. Get him! And Eddie's like, and this is my favorite, one of my favorite lines in the in the uh, in the movie. He's like, "What the hell? We didn't order out, man. Get this one out of here." <laughs> <laughs> you know, like he Chinese, he deliver Chinese, he deliver Oriental food. You know, so right, right. <laughs> This is when you get the, the classic situation where you got a mob boss that's just got a bunch of bums for goons. And he's already stretched these guys out yeah. already. So they come step up and they get they get mopped, of course. And then and, and that one the one <laughs> the one black guy that's in the group, he always threw that lazy ass sidekick, man. Yeah. Staying out like crazy. Always thought he he did it when they when they when they uh when they were fighting at the limo. And now he does the same yeah. move again and gets dropped. You know what I'm saying? So it was hilarious. And then after he mops them all, you know, he gives Eddie Arcadian the warning, like, you know, I don't think Miss Charles enjoys your company. It'd be best for you to leave her alone, you know, in his most intimidating, yeah. you know, voice possible, even though he's a nice guy. He's trying, right? So Eddie's like, man, whatever, yeah. man. You're in big trouble. So he pulls the mask off. And I think at that point, you know, I don't think before that, I don't think Vanity knew, you know, uh, uh, Laura knew who he yeah. was. And then she goes, oh, it's him again. He's coming to my rescue again. So she's just all smitten at yeah. me. Oh my God, this guy is amazing. Yeah. So unbeknownst to Leroy, what's in the tank? He goes, Oh, okay. Hot head, need cool water. <laughs> yeah. So he yeah, grabs yeah. old boy <laughs> over to the tank. And everybody's like, No, 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 don't do it, don't do it. And the fish, I guess, comes up <laughs> and decides to back off. And you see he's got like a little nickel on his face, but it literally just scares the shit right. out of him. So he's all jacked up after yeah, that yeah. shaking and trembling. And then uh, uh, Leroy, Leroy grabs uh, Laura and they leave. And then he's just like, yeah. he's just done after that. And then after that, he was like, you know what? Yeah. He's like, this motherfucker's history. We're going to take care of his ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. A, just a wonderful, yeah. wonderful I, fight scene. The, the, the choreographing was ridiculously just well done, man. Well done. Yeah. yeah, you go ahead. And, and in fact, something that you brought up to my to my attention, man, was that it wasn't Leroy that entire scene. It wasn't time. No, it was uh, it was Jeff uh, Jeff Ward. And the reason why I remember that yeah. is because I used to collect uh, Black Belt and Ninja Magazine back back during the eighties. And I remember there was a small article talking about the uh, the the Leroy's double, and you got a chance that little small article that uh, talked about about Jeff Ward. And, uh, you know, kind of displayed, you know, how long he'd been in martial arts and different stuff. So all of the Eskrima stuff that he was doing with the stick, breaking the guys down and stuff, that was all him. And, again, it just – just everything fit real well, man. Yeah. Fit real well. Yeah. yeah. Because you 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 would never know. You would never know no. if someone told you that wasn't Ty Mac in that, in that particular scene. You would never right. know. And that's a testament to the filmmakers, man, just making it so seamless. That you, I, right. I always believed that until you told me, and I and I found out. I had no reason to think it wasn't him. Yeah, none. You know, it's not like the stunt person or or double that they were using was like you know Eddie Murphy stunt double for Beverly Hills Cop, or right. or uh, or Turbo, not Turbo. Uh, yeah, Turbo's stunt double. For a breaking two when he fell down the steps, you know, a dude that's right, like eight right. inches taller and and built and no, you know what I'm saying? Like this dude actually, <laughs> right. you did you you couldn't tell the difference, right? You couldn't tell the difference, and that's just great, great filmmaking in my opinion. Exactly. But I'm sorry, go ahead, man. I stopped you. <laughs> no, you good, you good. So, uh, the only screamer stuff was uh was uh, Jeff Ward, and again, even with the style when he was throwing the ninja stars and different stuff like that. It just, you know, everything just yeah. fit so well. So, you know, you kind of see, like, the gradual pro progression of Leroy's, Leroy's skill set, man. Like, beginning, you know, from the, the fight from the, the limousine, 
you know, it was kind of like, okay, I'm just going to dispatch these guys and get her out of danger. Now you had to step it up because now you're going into an area where the guys might be armed. So he disarmed them. You know, he got the shooter hands, you know, with this Chinese stars. And he's just, you let them, this just let us know that Leroy's skill set is not, not so small. I mean, he's just a lot bigger to life than you right. would think. And that, that fight right there really showed it. Like, they were pulling out guns. Right. That's why he's got this legend. You know? Like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, at this point, yeah. we're like, like, wow, man. Like, like, dude, you gotta, you should have way more confidence than, than you do about yourself. You seem kind of going through a little struggle. But we're seeing from the outside looking in like this, man, the badass out there from hell, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so. Yeah, man. So he, he rescues uh, Laura. And, you know, at this point... I think I'm, I'm pretty confident saying that she was pretty moist because, you know, she was got <laughs> saved by the dude that she already had. She was already, she was already a little smitten by because he, she immediately invites him back to her place, man. And, you know, I feel like she was ready at that point. But Leroy, you know, he ain't know. He, he's green. His name is Leroy Green for a reason because, like, he was, just, he was really green at this point. And he didn't know what was right, going on. Right. You know, he goes back to the place and... She's like, you know, you are something, you know. He asked her, you know, if she happened to find the medallion. And she's like, oh, right. that, you know, that belt buckle. You know, I found it. You know, I go get it if you promise not to disappear on me again. The other night, I lost the medallion. Are you talking and about that thing that looks like a belt buckle? Here's the thing, man. She At this point, she's already throwing all kind of hints, right? So, like, an average yeah. dude would be kind of, like, excited. Like, oh, man, what's about to happen right now? Because yeah, she walks away, yeah. she's like, hold on, let me go get it. And he's all mm-hmm. dancing around like, oh, he's so excited. He's not excited because <laughs> he thinks he's about to get some. Right. He's excited about getting that medallion back. And he's genuinely just innocent. And that's one of the right. reasons you love this character. Right. You know? Absolutely. Laura got something else on her mind. Yeah. <laughs> you know? She, yeah. Leroy, you know, he's not... He That ain't even... Bro, they ain't even in his in his hemisphere right now. Right. He just wants that medallion back. You got to be feeling right. something right now. <laughs> you can't be right. sitting here next to Laura Charles Vanity and you don't feel nothing. But like we said, exactly. he's just a, he's a he's a big kid. He's a big kid, man. Yeah, and innocent. He just, he's he's so innocent. pure and innocent. Yeah, he uh, the way he even when he was sitting on the couch, man. I mean, this is again it kind of a testament to him because he he wasn't an actor, but him being in that scene and the way he acted, it was almost like genuine. Like in his mind, he was thinking, I'm just going to be a gentleman. You know, I, I'm, I'm here. I, I, I accomplished what I needed as far as getting the medallion back. And I'm very thankful to her. And then he made a quick exit, you know what I'm saying? Because he kind of realized the situation and stuff like that. And again, you're seeing that he's just as smitten as she, as she is, you know what I'm saying? And he's just like, uh, yeah. I need to know. I need to go. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, he said some, some Confucius stuff. <laughs> Some slick, yeah, stuff real quick. yeah. And he, he bowed, bowed, he bowed to her. Because <laughs> yeah, he was like he 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 bowed. He kind of looked to the side, like, "What am I supposed to do?" Like he just left, and that's that innocence, man. And she's just looking like, "Oh my goodness, what the hell?" Yeah, like, here we go again. And, and to me, it kind of yeah. makes it like it's part of this the the quest that he's embracing love. And he's embracing all these these fears and uncomfortable on un- being unsure of himself, even in that situation. Again, he, he's never been with a woman before, so he probably felt some certain urges. And he was like, man, let me get the hell out of here, man. <laughs> I ain't yeah, ready for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't know what to do with that. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> I wasn't prepared for this right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, man. So he, he ends up making um, an exit. It's when show enough comes into the diner, into their uh, oh, family man. diner. The pizzeria. Oh, I can find Leroy Green here. He walks in there, and of course, uh, what's her name is playing on the little uh, a little music screen thing they got in there. Yeah, a little video box. And, <laughs> you know, he, 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 yeah, yeah. I'm Leroy Green. Who are you? And he's like, well, he ain't here, and I don't, I don't think I'd tell you where he was if I knew. Right, right. That's the dad. Show enough yeah. ain't like that. So, nah. Right, right. Show enough, you know, got the goons. They're like hitting the tables and breaking stuff. And the mom grabbing pizza dose and she threw it in one of the goons' face. And <laughs> Richie's like, 
Richie tries to jump in like he's a hero. Like, bro, you a kid. Like, what are you doing? They threw the they, they took the Richie, can. man, threw him in the trash can, <laughs> bro. Right, right. Yeah. You hear you hear like the stuff like like spaghetti and everything in there. <laughs> right, right. So yeah, man, Richie uh, Richie gets pulled out the trash can. He's got like spaghetti sauce and shit all over him. <laughs> and and Richie's pissed now. And you know, rightfully so, Richie's pissed off. Right. He was like, the dude came in here challenging you. You've been ducking him, basically. You know, stop being a coward. He calls him a coward. He said, you kissed his shoes and everything. You know, coward. And it yeah. echoes in Leroy's head. And right after that, you get the scene of him. He's training. He's by himself in his dojo. He's sweating. He's hitting the heavy bag. He's kind of sitting on it. Then he sits on the floor. And that that ray of sunshine, that angel, walks into the room. Yeah. Uh, vanity. Uh, Laura Charles right. walks in with this black outfit on that I always thought was just fly as hell. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> she walks into the room and she's like, she's basically like flirting with him again and everything. But you can tell he's he's really depressed. This is this is where you know somebody who doesn't isn't trained as an actor. You can tell that like either somebody coached him, or he just kind of drew something within himself to try to play that part right. because he played that really well. He just played like a depressed. Like he just wasn't feeling anything that she was saying. She was trying to offer him a job as her bodyguard, but she really just kind of right. wanted to be close to him. And he wasn't picking up on any of it. Or if he was, he just didn't care. Because at that point, showing up has embarrassed him. He's embarrassed his family. And yeah. he's like, I don't want to be intimidated into a fight. Because that's not right. what his art is about. Right. It's for you know defense. And, and showing, up, showing up won't personally attack him. He's just provoking right. him. You know, what I'm saying to beat to attack Shona, and and that's not what he gets down with, and that's why he's so conflicted. Right, he doesn't want to be the one to go start a fight with Shona. Yeah, and Shona's smart enough right. to know that, like, all right, I ain't gonna hit him first. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's where you get that conflict, man. You see that in 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 Timax's face, and he plays that wonderfully, in my opinion. Absolutely I don't wonderful. Know what you think yeah. Absolutely. I, I agree with you 100 percent because he's dealing with that that pressure, man. I mean, again, Shonoff told him at the school, he was like, hey, man, you might not want to fight me, but you will. I'm going to see to that. So what yeah. what more of a of a pull in me personally attacking your family? That is that's you know, you off size. That is like the rawest thing you can possibly do. You know, yeah. he's letting him know it's all serious. I'm dead serious about fighting you, man. And like the very uh, next scene after that is when you get uh, Eddie Arcadian and his girlfriend, they're having a whole discussion. They end up kind of breaking up. Right, right. Because she doesn't agree. She doesn't agree with his tactics of trying to basically for to bully Laura into showing the video. Showing the video. And he's already kidnapped right, her right. once. He tried to another time. Mm. And he's trying to come up with a way to to get to force her to do it. And it, they just right, don't, right. They don't see eye to eye on that. And, yeah. and uh, right after is when Laura and Leroy, they hook up. Leroy, he's still kind of depressed, but she's like, look, I'm going to take you right. somewhere. I got something special for you. Right. So they right. get in the convertible and, and she takes them to the, the studio and she's got it set up to have like scenes from Bruce Lee movies in there. Um, yeah. yeah. What was the one? What was that one movie? I can't remember. Uh, Chinese Connection, I think. Chinese Connection. I can't right. remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Leroy, you see, like, gets this big grin on his face, man. And Laura, like, she can tell she's happy that like, she knew she did something that he really, that really brought him out of his funk. Right, right. You know, and and because he was really down on himself. And once again, you know, she's looking for that that moment that they should have. Because in any other movie, <laughs> they would have a moment right then. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. that moment where they, you know, they kiss, make love, whatever. But, you know, Leroy is so innocent. He's still so focused on the mission right? that he sees Bruce Leroy in disguise. And he gets an idea. Mm -hmm. He's like, you know, that is it. And she's like, what? And, and you know, he, he runs out of there. She's like, oh, again. Left the hanging. <laughs> <Left her hanging. laughs> <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. At this point, man, you, you got one more shot. <laughs> you got one more shot to mess this yeah. up with Laura, man. Yeah. He done turned he done yeah, turned yeah. her away like what three times? <laughs> yeah. Right. 
It was crazy. Like, tighten up, man. Um, but yeah, he gets the idea to get a disguise to go back. Because we forgot to mention the, the three Asian dudes he went to go see when he was trying to find some dumb goy, the master. He wow. finds like this yeah. uh, this building with, you know, some dumb goy on it. And these three Asian guys outside, and they're like, they're they're so deep into imitating or into their love of like black culture, you know. They they right. talking street slang, and you know they, they're smoking and drinking, and you know they're talking about shooting dice and whatnot. But right. he sees them, and they they basically turn him away the first time he meets them because he's like, you know, they're like <laughs> cornball, whatever. You know, get out of here. You know, who are you? you know, chop chop your ass. No job coolies. <laughs> right. <laughs> Like, so I ain't all right. Yeah. Uh yeah, so they 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 played him the first time, man. So then he gets the idea to come back in disguise. And his disguise wasn't really a disguise, it was just some different clothes, like actual clothes. Right. <laughs> right. And you know, he's acting like um well he's he's uh delivering a pizza. Right. Pizza with green So beans this probably. time right, right, right. <laughs> And, you know, he gets in, he gets inside and they're like chilling and kind of having fun. He's trying to, he's trying to be cool. He's trying to be hip, but he's not. And he's like, you could tell he's forcing it. You know, he's trying to use right. slang, but he doesn't know what he's saying. Yeah. He doesn't know what he's saying or how to use it. So he's showing the three dudes how to play, uh, basically his version of craps. He said, you want to play, you want to play like soul brother, you know, soul brother number one. He's like, all right, you know, it seems a little weird, but all right. So you know they're playing, they're doing hopscotch and everything. So fast forward a little bit, and Leroy starts asking about the medallion and asking about the master again. Right. So he shows the guys the medallion, and they're like huddling around each other, talking about it in, in in Chinese or whatever. They're like, "All right, look, come come with me, come with me." And Leroy's like, "We're going to see the master." He's like, "Yeah, come with me, come with me." So they lead him <laughs> outside, right. man, and like just punked him again, closed the door, and laughed at him. And he's yeah. looking like, like, come on now. And this is when Leroy yeah. flips again. He flips into Ninja Ninja Leroy now. <laughs> the dudes are inside right. laughing. And and all of a sudden, man, one kick and the door explodes. Oh, where is the master? And these dudes are like, oh, oh shit. Like, okay, now this dude's serious. <laughs> Scared the shit out of him. You know what I'm saying? He jacks. <laughs> He jacks one dude up. He's like, you know, tell me, take me to the master right now. And he's like, okay, 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 okay. okay. You know, <laughs> right. He so, you know, it's we made him up to sell more uh, fortune cookies, but you know, he takes him in the back, and he's like, this is some dumb goy, and it's it's just a machine that's printing out fortune fortunes for fortune cookies. A computer. This is when you find out his 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 master sent him on a wild goose chase. Right. Right. To basically, you know, we once we realized he, he wasn't sending him to find anybody but himself. Right. Right. And man, exactly. Leroy is just like, you can tell his face is like destroyed. Yeah. He's just destroyed, man. He goes back to see his master and the master's like, you know, basically like it's, you know, look within you. It, it's, it's, you know, it's there and only there where you can find the master. And, you know, he, he tells them, you know, like, there's nothing else I can do for you. You know, you need to find the master right. on your own, basically. At the same time, when Laura had Leroy in the studio, you know, Richie and his couple of friends were there and Eddie Arcadian <laughs> and, you know, the goons uh, show up to kidnap Laura again. Again, right. And now they're going to they're, now they're going to tie her up in, in her studio and they get Richie, too. And they yeah. tie him yeah. up. And you know now Eddie Arcadian is in control. He's got he's on the uh, you know on the board controlling the screen, and him and Rock and they start playing that <laughs> video of their fire. Right. And right. You, to Eddie Arcadian, you know this is where you're talking about his arc. His arc has he's he's become obsessed now. Right. With getting Laura, like getting revenge on Laura, because at this point, you know, showing the video doesn't mean anything because he's already broke up with his girlfriend. Now he just wants right, revenge right, on her, right. and he wants revenge on. And on uh, on Leroy, Leroy, right. So now this like this is his plot now to get Leroy, yeah. and you find out that he hired a bunch of goons. You know he went to go see Show Enough at that Show Enough dojo or whatever, and he was offering him a briefcase of money, and Show Enough's like, 
keep your money. Right. And this this is where, you know, showing up as as much of a, a bad guy as he is in this movie, he's got a few principles. Right. You know, one, right. he wants he wants Leroy to willingly fight him. Right. You know, he, no cheap shots. And I ain't gonna run up behind you and no bullshit like that. I want you to fight me straight up one on one. Square up. Square up. Exactly. Yep. Square up. And even when he offered the opportunity to make money from fighting Leroy, he's like, nah, keep your money. This ain't about that. Right. This is about me proving I'm the master. And Leroy's in exactly. my way. Exactly. And that's what you just gotta respect the dude. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you gotta respect him. And of course Eddie was like, you know, fair enough, took his money back, like, all right, you ain't gotta tell me <laughs> more. <than that."> you know. <laughs> right. Right. You know, Leroy's at this this crossroad now. You know what I'm saying? And he's gotta he go he 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 he's gotta find out, you know, who the master is. He doesn't know that Laura's missed kidnapped yet. Angela goes to the dojo looking for Leroy. Right. And he's not there. But Johnny's there. Talks to Johnny. Mm-hmm. Right. She talks to Johnny saying that, hey, my ex, Eddie Arcadian, he's crazy. You know, he's gonna mm-hmm. do something to Laura and he wants revenge on on uh Leroy, blah, blah, blah. Oh, Leroy. And yeah, you know, she leaves and Johnny tells Leroy when he gets back to the dojo. He's right. Like, Look, man, you know, what are you doing? He's like, I wouldn't have told you if I thought you were gonna go do something, man. What do you thought Leroy was right. gonna do? You know, he, of course he's gonna go save his girl and his brother. But he doesn't know I don't even think he knew his brother was there, but of course he knew no. he was gonna save his girl. Right. You know, what else is he gonna do? What do you think this guy was gonna do? He's the most noble person you've ever met, you know? Exactly. Exactly. And and I think it was it was then that it wasn't until then that you even meet um, Eddie Prince Jr. Because yeah. when Leroy is getting all the like the gear, like he's getting his weapons and stuff, and Johnny's helping, and you know he tricks Johnny into getting inside that closet and he locks him in. <laughs> right, right. And Johnny's like, Leroy, Leroy, let me out, you know. And that's when Eddie Prince Jr. shows up a little, little bit later and lets him out. And that's when he on. shows up in the movie. It's like the, like the last third of the movie. And Leroy goes to Laura's uh, studio, seventh man. Heaven. Eddie, um, Eddie Arcadian, you know, he has the, the, the uh, Seventh Heaven under control. and He's got the goons there. You know, the little trap set up for, uh, for Leroy, just like Arcade from, from the Marvel comics. You know, got the little, the yeah. little uh, uh, amusement set up to go. Leroy arrives, but unbeknownst to him, you know, Johnny Young kind of Johnny Yu kind of goes and and gets the rest of his students, and they're kind of like on the way. Yeah. Um, so Leroy goes in there, and uh, you know, Eddie Arcade has this big dramatic entrance, and yeah. you know, I've compiled you know the rogue this rogues gallery so yeah. that you can go out in style, and they got the lights and everything. So this big epic fights going on. So right now, Leroy is one versus like eighty in that mall. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so he, yeah. he's doing Holding all right for a minute. Yeah. And doing all right in, in the beginning until he, he he meets the big guy and gets body slammed a couple of times and then once he goes down yeah. they start beating him down and uh, out of nowhere he comes all of the students coming in there yeah. uh, thanks to thanks to Johnny Johnny and, and the crew mm-hmm. coming in they just start commence to beating some ass and uh, yeah I and, think and the music drops this, too man that's 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 the oh, thing the music drops. It's perfect. Awesome. Awesome, man. Awesome. The music was awesome. And, you know, you kind of see everybody kind of come full circle where like Johnny kind of was the, the, the man that was fighting without fighting type thing or not knowing how to fight. And then all of a sudden he finds himself in a moment and say, hey, you know, I just hit a dude and he went down. Maybe I got it. Maybe I got it. You know? And yeah, even and that right. was one of my favorite parts, you know, when like because because uh, uh, Leroy saw him, he's like, you got it, Johnny. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody's kind of boosted. Got the nunchucks. He's like, yeah. yeah. Everybody's boosted and, you know, during the save the day part. And uh, then from that part, um, Leroy gets kind of called out by AD Arcadian. Hey, this way. So uh, yeah. Leroy separates himself from the rest of the pack and the, the students are cleaning up the rest of the goons. And he goes um, and he ends up fighting Beast. Because uh, yeah. he, he finds his little brother, and uh, little brother, you know, took down Rock. That was hilarious. 
Yeah, Rock Rock yeah. snuck him, yeah. and he kicked, kicked Rock in the, in the balls. balls a couple of times. <laughs> yeah. Rock Rock, so you know Richie's feeling good about himself. Like, yeah, I got this, I got yeah. this. Then he runs into into Beast, and Beast got the steel cup on, and he tries to kick Beast, and he's like, yeah. oh my damn, my leg. Yeah. And Beast got him like, yeah. And then Leroy pulls up. He goes, yeah, hey, put him down. He's like, anything you say to him, and he gets his head on the tank. <laughs> Yeah. He was out, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, from this point, you know, everybody's like, at that point, I know you and me both were like, yeah, man, this man, need he needs his ass beat. Man. You got to take Beast down. Beast, Beast was a pain in the yeah. ass. Yeah, so, oh, because Beast, Beast's been a problem the whole movie. Beast's been a problem the whole exactly. movie. Exactly. And at this point, you yeah. wait for him to get that ass whooped. And, and, you, yeah. and you were hoping, you were hoping that Leroy was the one that whooped his ass. And that's one exactly. of the great things about this movie, man. You get exactly, you get exactly what you want. I'm exactly. sorry. Exactly. <laughs> so no, you good, you good. So the, the payoff was they squared up, and then you start to you see that you know Beast wasn't, you know these guys they had this this air of intimidation about them because you know they're walking with showing up, but you can see that clearly like some of these guys were not practicing, they're not these martial artists or these big goons, these these fighters like they proclaim to be. They just riding off of showing yeah. coattail. And Beast went down yeah. hard, which I love. I love. He was soft as yeah. soft as yeah. Twinkie feeling, man. So I was like, yeah. <laughs> and that end part where when he just took his head and just psh, kicked him, kicked him with the yeah. heel of his freaking. Ooh, I on. laughed my ass off, <laughs> bro. Bro, you talking about movie theater experience with that man? That was like when when Neo when Neo fought Agent Smith in the first Matrix. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. And when he when he when he broke right. his glasses, like, bro. That's that's the feeling. That's the feeling. When he when he finally whooped Beast's ass, oh right, love right. it. I still love it to so, this day, man. To this day. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, then he he wakes Richie up, and I think this is this is Richie's humbling moment, you know, because you've seen your brother come to save you now. You know, yeah. he's he's basically saving your butt, and he's like, oh, uh, they got to the drop on me, but I gotta go save Laura. And then, and then Leo was like, man, you ain't going nowhere, man. Yeah. So he, <laughs> He locks him away. He's like, man, come yeah, on, I gotta save Laura, yeah. man. He was like, nah, stay there. So that's this is the point here where you got the epic final battle. You know, that's when that's when your boy showing up shows up and he goes, Leroy, this shit just echoes. You warmed yeah. up yet? You warmed up yet? <laughs> Takes that the, the elevator yeah. joint and just opens it up, man. <laughs> He was just like, Come on, that's you know, epic, man. That, that is that is epic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, with, we were we were just as unsure about Leroy's capabilities. Like, is he really going to pull this yeah. off, man? Because this dude is big as hell. So Leroy yeah. is like, all right. So he square up, throws a few flashy blows at him, and 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 showing up like, nigga, please get your ass out of here with that boy. Huh. One and one hand, oh. hold up, one hand blocks every one of them. Like, pop, pop. Yeah, and then catches the punch, yeah. catches the last punch, <laughs> and and commences. And I'm sorry, bro, bro. I'm sorry to even stop you right now, but he catches the blow, and then commences. He said, "Nigga, please." Turned it, and then open hand slaps Leroy. <laughs> you don't slap a man. Right. He slaps him like four or five times. Like, pop. I'm like, yo, yeah. yo, Leroy is about to get his ass whooped. Mm -hmm. Like that is so, that is so disrespectful. Open hand. Like somebody <laughs> has that little respect for you, right? <laughs> I have so little respect for you. I'm gonna slap you. I'm not gonna punch you. I'm gonna slap you. Like that is. Just, ooh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, continue, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> you good? You good? But I'm enjoying this as much as you are. Man. So you know, Leroy kind of does the. False wooziness, and then when Shonoff opens up to come in, yeah. that's when he counters and he lights him up. So I think that at that point, Shonoff yeah. was like, "Okay, this motherfucker, he got he got some hands with him." So that's when he gets into his stance and right. he does the hair. All right, come on, <laughs> yeah, so then yeah, up come on, Shonoff, come on, the wall. He does that. Like, oh shit. yeah, he says things a little, don't it? He come in there, and that's and the music. You got to remember this music, the soundtrack. Hey. The soundtrack that's playing in the background, it's like this constant like synth, like kind of lo-fi sound that is just 
like this intimidate. If if that's showing us theme song, that is one of the greatest villain theme songs ever. And it's like this constant in the background, and yep. man, it's just it, it makes it it makes the scene more tense and more it makes him more intimidating. Right, right. Because you know, right after, right, he's, he kicks him through that wall. He like sings a little, don't he? Comes out there and you don't see him. Yeah. Yeah, and and so, you hear Richie, like, Leroy. You hear Richie in the background, Leroy, and you see, uh, <laughs> you see him showing up do like this, like. And you shut up! I'm about to whoop your brother's ass. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> you good, bro? You good? So, the wall. So that I think that was a wake up call for Leroy, saying, "Hey, you can't, you can't deal with this dude's, you know, head up. You got to use, use some brains with it." So, you know. Yeah. He's uh, you know, has shown up, walk around a little bit, and shown us like, "Hey, Leroy, you can run, but you can't hide. Come on, you know." And then he mm-hmm. kind of plays him out by opening the door a crack, and here Leroy, like as soon as shown up, looks in the door. Leroy comes with this flying kick with everything he's got. Wow, yeah, in the square. <laughs> Lays him out, man. Oh, he finally got him. He finally put him out, man. Oh right. my God! And you just relief. exhausted. He's got that relief on his face. Right. Yeah, you're, you're just as exhausted as as Leroy is. And then Leroy turns, thinking that everything is over. And then he hears his voice, Leroy. Turn around, oh boy, gone. <laughs> Leroy. And that, that music point again, right there. <laughs> That point right there for me made me understand that Shonuf is not the man we have all that we we have all kind of built him up to be over this this long journey with this film, yeah. and the fear sets in because even Leroy's face is like, "What the hell? I yeah. I did this. I do this type of stuff. What right. the heck is this?" So he's walking around, and that's when Shonuf comes back as Shonuf 2.0 with the glow. With the glow, bruh. Three times over, boy. Like, bro, we've been talking about the. It, it was crazy. We haven't really even mentioned the glow, really, this entire thing. But the whole point of him becoming the master and find out and, and becoming, you know, the last dragon is that he will possess a glow. The master told him at the beginning, the very beginning of the movie, you would get a glow, and you know, basically, like. It's, man, it's, it's some Goku shit, basically. Like, once you get the glow, that's it. Right, right. Super Saiyan. <laughs> and and here we are. Yeah, here we are. Show enough got the damn glow. But he got a little red glow. And at this point, you haven't seen the glow. You don't know what the glow looked like. Show enough got the, the, the 80s rotoscoped red glow. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. Right. He's like, yeah, Leroy, I got something real for your ass now. You know, like let's get that it. point. That point right there really Man. had me shook because you noticed Leroy was he was flabbergasted. Man, he just looking like he's looking at himself like, you know, here I'm trying to achieve this, yeah. and this man already he's already there. How am I gonna win? How the hell am I gonna win? Yeah, and that was his whole demeanor, yep. his whole face. Yep. And showing up was like, yeah. Yep. Playtime's over, boy. And I was just like, oh, man. Boy. <laughs> yep. And then Leroy, remember, because Leroy is totally now unsure of himself because he looks at his own hands like, yeah. I don't have the glow. Have this it. guy is the master. Exactly. Like, he, right. it demoralized him. Yes. And, and yeah. man, show enough, show enough, starts throwing them glow blows on him. You see, like the, the the sparks flying off, and the sound, the sound design of when he when he throws these punches with the glow, when they hit, it sounds different. Yeah, it's like it sounds yes. it's thunderous. It's like, like man, like he's hitting them with some actual force, and you Ooh. feel it. You, know, you really feel it. He's just whooping Leroy's ass, man. Kicks him, makes him do a flip. Stretch, and that's one of the yet. scenes where there's a stunt man that you won't hardly ever notice unless you know what to look for. <laughs> But yeah, he's stretching he them out, man. Just <laughs> yeah, whooping that ass, yeah. Yeah. whooping that ass, man. Yeah. But go, I'm sorry, I keep stopping, man. Go ahead. I, I, love, you good. You good. I, I love listening to other people talk about this movie because I love this movie so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we 
we're seeing for the for the next what two or three minutes, Leroy just getting his ass handed to him, man. And Shonoff is just just enjoying yeah. it, just taking him down just brick by brick, man. And he stops and he says, Okay. He says, So yeah. when I say, Who's the master? He said, You say, Shonoff. Master. You say show. And by this time, Leroy bloody he show enough. Show enough. <laughs> he meant that shit. Yeah. <laughs> He's savoring that moment, man. Savoring the moment. Yeah. Like like the he, he felt he felt that shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he was like, who was the master? Yeah. And Leroy won't Leroy feel still, it. Leroy was like, Leroy mm. still Leroy not yielding. Like, mm. Still not yielding. So he's like, all right, no problem. Mm -mm. Start beating him some more. Then he get to the point where he's just demoralizing him, ripping his clothes, man. He took his top off, man. Yeah. Just straight, just straight handling this mug like he had an infant. So yeah. steadily asking him, who's the master? <laughs> who's the master? And then, then like the last time when he asked him and he wouldn't say anything, he just smacked this. He backhanded the shit out of Leroy, man. I'm like, God damn, yeah. I'm walking this man's yeah. tank, man. Damn. Yeah, bleeding <laughs> like and stuff, spit, man. Spit all oh. over the screen. Yeah. yeah. We were just stretched. So eventually they get over to the water and he was drowning him, trying to get him to submit from through drowning. Yeah. And of course, Eddie Arcadian this whole time said, Yeah, drown him, drown him. You got him. Kill him, kill him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the only thing yeah. Shonuff wanted to do was wanted to break him. Who's the master? He hold him down. And the whole time yeah. he's doing that, Leroy is reflecting inward, thinking of the things that his master mm -hmm. was talking about, thinking of the whole journey up to that point, how he's fought, how he's tried to protect uh, Laura, how, how you know, just the different different uh, uh, changes that he went through. And then finally, whatever happened, he broke through that, that wall and found that, that it snapped. was him all yeah. along. He's one place that you have not looked, and it is there. So when he comes up for that yeah. last time, yeah, he's, he's just got, his whole face is just different. He's just looking at showing up like, nah, man, yeah. we, we, we gonna change this up right now. And then he's like, all right, Leroy, yeah. like he's about to take, I, I, I'm i pretty sure that if Leroy hadn't broke through, I'm pretty sure that showing up would have took him out because it, they were just at that point yeah. where I'm tired of asking you, man. Yeah. I'm tired of asking you, I'm about yep. to take you out of here. So he's like, all right, Leroy, who the, is the master, man? And Leroy says, I am with just the surest, yeah. Confidence out of out of like out of the, out of this world, man. Who's the one and only master? I am. And then Shona yeah. was like, man, and he <laughs> starts. <to eat>. <laughs> <laughs> he that fist, man, and he twists yeah. it. He looks at him. He says, I am. I mean, that I shit was like am. he wanted him to know. Now I know. Yeah. Him. Oh, and then he starts his golden glow. He, he's, he's, <laughs> yeah. Right. He was telling me about when he just crushing his fist, and that's when Shonuff start to get start to get black. Like, oh shit, let me go, nigga, let me go. Let me go, motherfucker, let me go. He got real black real quick. Let me go, motherfucker, let me go. <laughs> Hilarious, man. Hilarious. So oh, he lets man. go, and Leroy in his glory just kind of flexes. And does the praying man is joint on him, and and then showing yeah. up still, still rebelling, man, still not yeah. really. He's like, all right, <laughs> short now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, short, short now. He's short circling a little bit. Yeah, hold on, and then Leroy commits to handing him his ass for about two minutes, <laughs> just smacking yep. him around, beating him. And down. Leroy hitting him with those thunderous, thunderous blows. Bow, man, you yeah. see those. Blue and gold sparks coming off and everything, and just and the, and the theme song. The theme song starts playing as soon as he takes him out of the water that last time, right? And you know that it's talking about you know the power of the glow and the yep. theme song's pumping. He's whooping, showing us ass, showing us can't land a blow. You know what I'm saying? Nope, can't get a hit in. <laughs> and you know, yeah, like he's just whooping his ass, and finally kicks him into that that same water that showing up is trying to drown him in. And and after that point, man, Shonoff was wrecked. He was done. He was done. Show, yeah, he was uh, done. He Bruce, Leroy's improved. He, yeah, he proved who the master is. Now he pulls him out the water, leans him over the leans him over the side. Still got to deal with Eddie Arcadian though. Yeah, yeah. Because Eddie Arcadian up. still got Laura at gunpoint. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
He's he's like, you and know, he pops up with that uh, All that kung fu and... don't mean nothing. <laughs> yep. Just takes one bullet, one bullet, cut all this kung yep. fu crap out, you know. So yep. he ends up shooting him. And you see uh you see Lou go spin and go down. Turns yep. around and he's got the bullet in his teeth, man. And everybody's just like, oh yep. my God. I was just like, oh, so the legend was true. What? Bro. So, yeah. True. <laughs> yeah. Caught the bullet true. in his teeth. Leroy sticks him Bro. a couple times legend. and then hangs him up to dry. Yeah. <laughs> hangs him on the hook. Yeah. Yeah, that ending is incredible. That ending is incredible, man. Yeah. That ending is incredible. Yeah. You know, that climax is just that's how you that's how you end the movie. You know, there's yeah. one more scene after, but like that's how you that's how you end a movie like this. Right. Resolution. Right. He got rid of both the bad guys, got the girl, saved his brother, became the master. Like everything all right. wrapped into one scene. And he worked for it. He didn't it wasn't handed to him. He worked for it, man. Yeah. Which made it just that the payoff was that much more sweeter for for the audience, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and the last scene we get in the movie is like a really sweet scene where yeah. it comes around kind of full circle where where his brother, you know, Richie has Richie everybody in this movie has a character arc. That's the other thing. Yes. You know, Richie's arc yes. is, you know, being combative with his brother and kind of, you know, disrespecting him. But you know, he loves him, but he disrespects him. By the end, man, he was like, Look, man, y'all y'all can't call my brother no cornball. That's that's my brother. He's the master. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Um, that that acknowledge they're in they're in Laura's studio. It's like a yeah, yeah, that acknowledgement. The acknowledgement. And they're in Laura's, you know, studio. It's like an all white party or whatever going on. All white party, and right? Laura comes down and Leroy's got the flowers and you know, you see him yelling something and he's saying, you know, he's yelling, you know, can you teach me some moves? But you can't hear, she can't hear him. She's like, What? So then the music stops. He's like, Can you teach me some moves? <laughs> Who can teach me some moves? <laughs> and of course everybody Everybody laughs or whatever, and that's when Richie like defends him like, you know, that's, my brother ain't no cornball, you know, he's the master. It was such a payoff to see him swing back far from left all the way to right and acknowledge his brother and yeah. defend his brother, man. That that hit so that hit, hits home so much, man, to see him yeah. do that, you know, yeah. man. Because the whole yep. film he'd been clowning now, in the whole film. And now it's like they said, man, it's like it's like a one eighty, and now it's it's a different Richie, and everybody in this movie's got their arch. Maybe except Laura, she was kind of the same person the whole movie, but pretty much everyone has like an arc. You know, just seeing he he finally does get his girl. And, you know, she does that slow motion run down to him and everything. And that's when the movie kind of goes off and the the slow yeah. R&B songs playing. We all get what we want. Leroy gets what he wants. Laura got what right. she wanted. The audience got what they wanted. And this movie is perfect. Well, I will always say this movie is perfect. I don't care who tells me otherwise. It is. It this, is perfect. This movie is perfect. perfect. Right. Absolutely perfect. It's got a little bit of everything. It's got the action. It's got the it's got the the sensitivity. It's got the comedy. It you know they nailed it. They nailed it with this movie. It's a shame that it wasn't a, a bigger hit. I was saying the the movie wasn't a huge. It was a, it was a hit. It was definitely a hit. It, you know, it became a bigger hit when it went to like HBO and uh, VHS back in the day. Right. That's when a lot of people got a chance to see it because it was on all the time on like HBO. Uh, but right. because of like creative differences and everything, that it, the sequel didn't get made when it should have. And I don't right. even know, like a movie like this, you know, at that time we might have been begging for a sequel. But now I'm like, man, this it's such a great self-contained movie. I don't know if a direct, excuse me, I don't know if a direct sequel could do it justice. You know what I'm saying? Right. Not not this late in yeah. the game. Like it, a sequel now would have to be. It would be kind of a different movie. But right. it's a, it's it is a shame that they didn't get one in like the movie came out eighty five. It's a shame they didn't get a sequel in like eighty six or eighty seven, because that's right. when it should have happened. You know, yeah. that's when it would have been the best. Um, right, shortly after. But yeah, yeah. But those the, that's yeah that's that's my thoughts on like you know the the theatrical release of it. But I also like you were saying earlier with the ninja craze in the eighties, it came out at the perfect time, the middle right. of the eighties. It came out at the perfect time to be like this cult classic. It's, when it comes to people, especially around my age, you're in your forties, you and you're black, you've definitely seen this movie at some point. It's like it's like Absolutely. the movie Friday. Like we've all seen it. You know? Yeah. Um, it's part of our culture. 
you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's mean, it's, it's, it's repeated. It's just part of, you know, who we are. Um, and I love it forever right. for that. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, it, it, this, this is, again, it's going to be always going to be one of my top films. Um, and like, like, like you had said before, you know, we want to give our flowers to, uh, you know, Denise Matthews Vanity and Julius Carey mm -hmm. and also Leo O'Brien, man, all three of them are no longer with us for, for various reasons. And uh, they, their performances were, were wonderful in this film. And, and I just I, I, I wish that this film was was received, you know, a lot better. And uh, I think, again, like, you know, because of us, people like us, man, we're going to try to keep the torch lit for this, man, because, again, this film is still yeah. relevant today. People, children. You know, teenagers, they still need to see this. They still need to see the the good, the struggle for good and evil, the, 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 the idea of finding yourself as an individual, believing in yourself and, and using that inner power to, to, to go through trials and tribulations and win. Yeah. You know, it's so important, man, because I told you this this film came at the right time for me. Uh, it gave me uh, it, it gave me a, a, a it curved me toward the right direction, because a lot of times because. Yeah being bullied and stuff, you know, I, I chose violence. <laughs> and now, right. you know, after seeing this film, it kind of like gave me a balance. Like, you don't want to do that all the time because it's not the solution. You know what I'm saying? But when you have to, yeah. then make sure it is. It's the right thing to do. And that that changed a, yeah. that changed me a lot. So definitely. Um, yeah. But that that's my closing well, points. Man. I, I'm going to just say this, man. This probably, I, I got to say, like, I, probably this likely won't be the last time we speak about this movie oh no definitely we, not. we still left a lot out we, we left out a lot yeah. of information you know like I said give our flowers to the people who are gone right and just just knowing that this movie means so much to a lot of people um we just wanted to talk about it and for anybody who watched this video we really appreciate it we hope you've learned something we hope you had a great time we hope you got to revisit a movie you maybe hadn't seen in a while a movie that you love Definitely. Because we both do. I just got to say, man, you know, thank you again for coming here and doing this. Man, thank you for having me, man. This is this has been a blast. And I hope that, you know, the, the viewers yeah. enjoy this and, and enjoy, have enjoyed the film as much as we have. And if you haven't seen it, you know, to yourself to watch this film because it's worth it. It'll yeah. it'll 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 change your way of thinking. Definitely. Yeah. It'll put a smile on your face at the very least. <laughs> at the Absolutely. very least. Yeah, once again, thanks everyone. Um, join us, like, share, subscribe. Join us next time. Yes, please. We'll be back. Take care, everybody.